Hey guys, welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In today's video, we'll be diving into the account statement page on Thinkorswim. Now, if you're new to this page, it does have a lot of helpful information, but I typically like to think of it as more of a historical view of my account. Now to access it, all we have to do is come up here to the monitor tab and toggle over to the account statement page. At the very top of this page, you're gonna see what account we're looking at, how far back we're looking, and right here is where you could narrow it down by symbol if you wanted to. Now in our case, we're gonna go ahead and adjust this to seven days back, just so we actually have some information populate on this screen. But if you wanted to, you can go back as far as you'd like, either by typing in a little number here, or if you want to look at a specific date range, you can type in the date range right here. Just keep in mind that unless you have advanced features enabled, the farthest back you're gonna be able to look is 45 five days. Now, TD Ameritrade recently removed the option for you to enable advanced features from your own on the website. So to get that flipped over, you are gonna need to either call or chat them requesting to make the change. But it's super easy, it takes like one day to update. And then after that's done, you're gonna be able to look back as far as you'd like on this page. Now that we have seven put up there, we're gonna go ahead and click out of this to save it. And we're gonna start at the very top here, the cash and sweep vehicle page. Now this section is basically just the transactions page. You're gonna be able to see all of your cash transfers, dividends, purchases, options assignments, and the commissions and fees charged in your trades. Now on the right hand side, you're also going to see the resulting cash balance of those transactions. And like I said earlier, your commissions and fees are just to the left of that. Now this list can also be refined down by transaction. So if we only want to look at my trades in the account, I could uncheck all of these deposits, withdrawals, transfers, dividends, and start of day balances. And now this page is only showing my transactions or my trades in the account. Now if we add them all back, we can take a look that uh, at the very bottom here, I was just recently assigned some SoFi puts. And if you scroll up, you can also see that I rolled out my rocket position. I bought back TTCF. I rolled out Walgreens and I rolled out Activision. So again, it just gives me a nice little breakdown of what I've actually done in this account. Now, the next one we're gonna be looking at is the order history page. This page is gonna be a breakdown of all the trades you've actually placed and the time that you placed them. It'll also tell you whether they were eventually filled, canceled, or expired. Now, the date or time that you see on the left-hand side over here is the actual time and date that you placed this trade, not the time that it filled, if it did fill. On the right-hand side over here where you see a price, this is not the price that you filled at necessarily, it's just the price that you set when you originally put in the order. Also, if you are searching for a specific trade on a specific stock, you can narrow it down by typing in the symbol you're searching for up here in the top right-hand side. So in our example, if we wanted to narrow it down by SoFi, we can look at all the trades I've placed on SoFi in the last seven days, whether they filled or whether or not they were canceled by me. Now we're gonna go ahead and delete that out. And the next page we're gonna look at is the trade history page. The trade history page is really only gonna show you those trades that have actually filled in the account. And the date and times you see on the left-hand side of the order ticket is gonna be the actual date and time the order filled. The prices that you see over here on the right-hand side are also gonna be the prices at which they filled out as well. Just like before, you can narrow down the list here by typing in a specific symbol. So if we wanna look at just what I did on Palantir, we'll go ahead and throw that in there. And we can see all I did in the last seven days was sell to open three Palantir $20.5 puts. Now the next tab down we're gonna look at is the equities tab. Like the name suggests, this is just gonna give you a breakdown of your current equities in the account. Looking at it now, you're gonna see a lot of similarity to the activity and positions page, telling you what stock you own, how many shares you hold, the price you bought it for, its current price, and the total value of the position. However, as I mentioned before, this is typically used to see a historical view of your account. Look closely at my current position of Amazon. You can see I currently hold five shares, and as the close of today, Amazon is trading at $3,570.90 a share. Let's go ahead and change the date range at the very top of the page to look at what I held in this account on June 1st of 2021. You can see that on June 1st, I was holding 11 shares of Amazon, and at the time, Amazon was trading at $3,218.65 a share. So if you're ever curious what positions you were trading on a specific day or what you had in your account on a specific day, this is one way to do it. Now, the next one up we're gonna talk about is the options page. Now, this section is very similar to the last. However, this time, it's just breaking down your options positions in the account. From here, you can see all of my current options positions that I hold in this account the strikes and expirations that I sold, the prices that I sold them at, and what they're currently trading for. Just like before, you can change it to a specific day if you wanna see what my portfolio consisted of on that day. And you can see what those contracts were trading for at that time. Another very useful tool on here is the ability to see how much premium is left in the contracts. As an option seller, I sell premium and wait as time passes to see that premium eventually trickle away. 
It can be a pain at times to add all those premiums up to see what I still have on deck waiting to hopefully expire worthless. And if you highlight your entire options portfolio in here, it's gonna show you the amount left in those contracts in the lower right hand corner. If you see here, if I highlight all that's left in July, you can see that I've got $2,383.50 in premium left in these contracts. Hopefully that's gonna expire worthless here in a few weeks. This tool is probably my main draw to this page. Otherwise, I would just have to continuously be exporting data to the Excel file to do the math for me. This simplifies things quite a bit. Now, the next page up is going to be the Profits and Losses tab. Now, this page is gonna give you a breakdown of your exact P&L on all of your positions since you opened them or a year to date, so January 1st to today. For example, if we take a look at Amazon here, you can see that I'm currently up a total of $3,053.18 on that stock. That's gonna include all the trades I place on Amazon throughout the year, including both stock and options. You can also use this page to look at your P&L for a certain time period. For example, let's say I wanted to look for June 1st to June 30th. We're gonna come up here to the top just like we did before and set the time parameters. June 1st to June 30th. Now the main problem with this is that all of your trades are gonna be grouped together and if you trade options, they're all gonna fall under the stock ticker. This page also seems to get a bit confused sometimes with short options and completely throws off the numbers. But to see what we made for the month on Amazon, we're gonna go ahead and look at the P&L differential comp. So let's go ahead and highlight Amazon here. We can see that year to date, and remember that's year to date to June 30th, I was up $2,399.48 on Amazon. But for the month of June, it's showing me that I was up $2,827.32 from January 1st to January 30th, which basically means there was a $400 loss before June that it's not factoring in right here. And I believe that came from some option spreads that I sold against Amazon that I took a loss on. I think this page is great for tracking P&L if you're just trading stock or long options, but if you sell options like myself, your best bet to track your progress is gonna actually be going to the TD Ameritrade cost basis page. From here, you can set a date range and see exactly how much you made or lost for that time frame. It's also gonna list out the options individually, which makes it a lot easier for me. But honestly, I think it's all about personal preference. If you're fine with everything kind of being merged together on the Thinkorswim transactions page, then you're fine. If you wanna see each transaction listed out individually, each option contract individually, then your best bet, again, is to go over to TD Ameritrade and go to the cost basis page. Now, the very last section we're gonna talk about is the account summary page. If you leave the time frame set to one day up at the top, this section is gonna show you exactly what you see up here in the top left-hand corner in the account info section. However, if you change the date range, you're gonna see what your net lick, buying power, or cash available was on a specific date back in time. For me personally, I don't find this incredibly useful, but it might come in handy if you're ever curious as to what your account was worth on a certain day to track your progress. For example, I could set this to June 1st right here. And we can see that my net lick on that day was $164,232.36. And if you look here down below, this was my available stock buying power, my margin equity, my equity percentage. But again, I don't find this crazy useful, but it's nice to have just in case you were ever curious. Now, I know we went through a lot, but as you saw, the account statement page is typically gonna be used when you're trying to track the history in the account, whereas you're typically gonna be using the activity and positions page when you're actually tracking your open positions. I really hope this video helped. If it did, please leave it a like down below. And if you guys do have any follow-up questions for me or some suggestions for future videos, please leave them down below in the comments. I hope you all make some money this week and I'll catch you all in the next video.